Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ara, and today I have a really exciting um, project for you. Excuse me. Did you hear that? Did you say something? Oh, you know, it's just me, your little ignored project over here. Look, I I'm sorry. I've just been really, really busy with a bunch of different projects. You had Adam's Family October. What is this? No work on the coffee shop November? Well, how about if we make this whole video about you? We can, we can make that bistro set we've been talking about. <sighs> Whatever. Don't do me any favors or anything. <laughs> it's like working with a sassy child. I heard that. So as you just heard, we're going to be working on the coffee shop today. If you're new to my channel or you're new to this series, you can check out the playlist for the coffee shop in the iCard above. In a previous video, I showed you a table and chair setup, and you guys convinced me in the comments to make a delicate wire bistro set, which would probably look more at home in this type of a coffee shop. So let's get started. I hope you guys enjoy this video. To start off this project, I went ahead and drew out what I wanted each piece to look like. I have made this available for you to download. Check out the link in the description box below if you're interested in trying to make this project for yourself. I'm going to be using mat board for each of the circles that you see in the drawing. There's one that's the back of the chair and one for the seat of the chair, and then of course one for the top of the table. I'm using a circle template, you can find these at most craft stores, and I've written the diameters of each circle onto the drawing, and all you have to do is look up which circle matches the correct measurement, draw it onto the mat board. I'm doing two of the small size circles for the back of the chair because I'm creating two chairs, and then I'm going to have to make two circles for the seat of the chair because I'm again making two chairs and then I will just have to do one large size circle for the table just because I'm making one table. I get asked a lot about what mat board is so make sure and check out the description box below if you're confused on that material because I left a brief description for you there. Now I'm going to use a very sharp exacto knife to carefully cut out each one of these circles. And after those are done, I'm going to take some sandpaper because I am not the cleanest cutter when it comes to cutting round surfaces and just sand out any imperfections in the sides. After the circles are cut out, we're going to have to figure out a way to bend the wire. One of the best places I've found to find round surfaces to bend wire over are toiletries. So lipsticks, um, little canisters for different things that you might take with you to travel. Those are all great bending surfaces. So now I'm just going to take each piece and try and find one that matches up with the diameter of the curve I'm trying to create. This wire, I am not sure what gauge it is. You will kind of have to be your own judge if you do try this out on whether it is a thick enough wire to stand up on its own. This is pretty easily bendable, but once it gets glued into place, it seems to be a pretty sturdy wire. Now I'm just going to bend it around. This is, I think, a Lysol can I not quite sure <laughs> and um, I'm just going to bend it and try and make sure that it fits onto my pattern once I have it to the size that I like I'm going to cut off the end and again test it with my pattern and then also put my circle in the middle of it to make sure that it's going to touch both sides of my circle the design of the back of this chair also has a second wire that goes up and around. Of course, if you try this on your own time, then you can change the pattern however you want. If you don't like the double layer, you can just do a single layer and make the circle bigger or change it however you feel. Now to glue it all together, you want to make sure you have some wax paper and specifically E6000 glue. This is what is going to hold your wire together the best. The glue takes a while to dry. And so this uh, project is going to test your patience a little bit. Uh, what you want to do is get the glue on any surfaces that are going to touch the circle. And then you're going to put your circle in there, making sure that there is contact between the circle and the glue and the wire. Once that's done, you want to make sure that you handle it as little as possible. The second arc of the back of the chair actually glues to the top of the first arc and so I just added a little glue to the top of that and then pressed the two pieces together. Now I did let these dry at least 
at least five hours in between touching them again. The E6000 bottle itself says it takes a full 24 hours to cure. Now I'm going to be working on the legs of the chair and I'm just going to be taking one of my bending surfaces and I'm going to be bending the first part around the top and then to make the leg pop out I'm going to bend it around the opposite direction. The point is <laughs> to try and make it match the curve that's on the drawing. So eventually after bending it a little bit I get a piece like this. I'm going to cut off the top piece a little bit short and I need to make four of these per chair. Once I have those pieces, I am going to actually use masking tape to tape them on so that they are secure so I can again use my E6000. These are a little bit fiddly. This does take time and patience to get this all done. So make sure that you're not trying to rush this project. I'm going to use E6000 on either side of the wires just so that I know that it's glued on as well as it can be. Later in the process I am going to remove the masking tape and glue in the middle. But I want this part to cure as much as it can so at least that five hours before I even try to remove the masking tape. Now I'm also going to start working on the legs of the table. So what I'm going to do, um, I eventually I remove those circles, those little bitty circles in between the legs, so ignore those. Um, I don't actually make those. But for the legs, I'm going to need to make six of these upside down L shapes. And I'm going to make them longer than they need to be because later I'm going to cut it to size. So I need to make six of these long shapes and these are going to be the legs that are glued to the underside of the table. Now each of the legs need to be grouped into twos and then spread apart in like, like if you divide the table into thirds so that you end up having three legs made from two of the upside down L shapes. Just like the chairs, I am putting E6000 on either side after I had taped down the centers with masking tape. And I want this to dry completely. I would suggest the full 24 hours, um, especially for the table legs, before taking the masking tape off. And then as you can see on the bottom of this chair, I'm taking E6000 and using a generous amount on the bottom so that I know that the legs are secure. So here's all the pieces I have so far. I reinforced the bottom of the chairs and the table and I put a little extra at the very top of the chairs. Now that that's completely cured, I am going to take my little wire benders and I'm bending out the feet slightly just to make a better um, place for the chair to rest. And then I'm straightening out the bottom of the chair back because it has to sit flat on the chair seat. And now I'm going to kind of set it up how it needs to be. I put a paintbrush underneath the bottom side of the back of the chair. And this isn't glued yet, I'm just setting it up. And I put a little mark where I needed to add my glue so that my two wires from my chair back can be sat into the glue. I'm going to put it straight on there, kind of a big glob. I think I do end up taking some of this off because it is a large amount. Um, but I do want quite a bit so that I know my wires will be secure. Make sure you don't get your paintbrush that's supporting it <laughs> into the E6000 because that will be a little bit of a mess. Before we do any more shaping to the table legs, we need to add the metal piece that is kind of the mid bar that holds them all together. So I found a larger round bottle and I took the same wire and wrapped it around the bottle to make a circle. And then I'm just going to end up trimming it down so that the pieces match exactly. And then I slipped it over the top, or it's actually the bottom of the table legs and then made sure that it looked even once I looked at it from the side. You will see it in a minute when I pick it up. And then anywhere that this round piece hits the table legs, I'm adding some E6000. And then also wherever the round piece matches with itself to make a complete circle, I'm adding some E6000 there so that round piece will not come apart. So there you go. You can see it from the side. You can see that it's kind of a mid piece and anywhere the wires touch, I'm making sure that there is glue. 
After a few hours of letting your chair rest, you should be able to pick it up without the back moving. And I'm just adding, again, more E6000. I am an overgluer, so I'm going to make sure that my stuff stays together. Now I'm just taking a, a lipstick tube and I'm putting it up against the piece that we just made. Make sure again that this is completely cured before you do this because it can cause your ring to move. But then I'm bending the legs of the table outward to create this kind of a shape. Now you will notice that my ring is a little bit higher than it is in my drawing, but that's okay. It still gives the same effect that I'm looking for. And then to make my table legs go down a little bit more, I'm taking my pliers and holding it at the spot I want to and then bending them straight down to create that table leg look. And I'm going to do this on each of the three legs. Once that's done, I'm going to hold it up to my pattern and cut each leg to size. Now that that's finished, I need to make sure that my two legs or my two pieces that are making one leg are glued together. So I'm going to use a clamp of some kind. You can also use maybe like small rubber bands. And I'm going to add E6000 to the back of the feet so that those two wires stay together forever. Now I'm making the pieces that go underneath the chair and I have it drawn on both the front and the side, but I end up just making ones that go on the front and the back. And to expedite this, instead of making each individual piece, I just found a curving surface that matched and I just made one long coil that I can cut pieces from in order to make this. And I will show you how I do that. So from the coil, I just cut a half circle, and this is going to be the piece that goes up under the seat that is kind of a helpful support to the two front legs. And it wasn't quite the correct diameter um, because this is a handmade item and sometimes the wires act a little differently or um, can get bent a little bit. Uh, you may have to adjust as you go, but having it coiled around a rather close diameter um, will help you. And then of course anywhere that the wire needs to stick I added E6000 glue. And here you can see I've added those pieces on between the front two legs and the back two legs. Now I'm going to make this side curve. It's a smaller curve so I'm using a smaller curved item to create another coil. I'm going to cut a quarter of a circle off and because this piece is going to be so tiny, I do suggest that you might use some pliers to help you put it on there. This will help you from getting E6000 all over your fingers. So this is going to fit on the side of the chair just like this, and there will be one on each side. So because I'm making two chairs, I'm going to need four total. Now to make the thickness on the table, I cut some paper that was 3 16 inch wide, and I'm adding just tacky glue. This does not need E6000 because I'm gluing paper to paper, so it should hold fine with just tacky glue. I'm going to add the paper around the edge of the table to give it that aluminum table look where it usually has some kind of thin edge hanging off of the side. When you're doing this, just make sure that you've made it level at the top and um, cut the strip of paper to match uh, wherever the beginning and end of the paper is. This is also helpful to cover up any messy glue jobs that may be underneath where the legs were attached. I'm going to do the same thing with a slightly smaller piece of paper for the chairs just to stay in proportion because the chairs are a little bit smaller. Same thing with tacky glue, just add them on carefully. Now for the last step, you don't have to do this step if you don't want to, but most of the metal furniture that I've been around has these little um, round feet that are kind of welded onto the bottom. So I'm using cardstock and I am just, I use this little button press type of a punch. I'm not, I don't have any idea where I got it, but the circles were the perfect size. I did that for the chair feet and also for the table feet. 
Now here comes the part where I make this guy look incredibly old and rusty. So if you're wanting this for a nicer project, you probably won't want to follow these steps. But I imagine this would look gorgeous with like a red um, shiny top to go into a 50s cafe. Or you could make it all aluminum by just adding silver paint to the top and to the paper feet. So to start off the rusty look, I'm just going to be adding a base coat of brown to the tabletop and to the legs all over the wires. There's going to be some parts where it doesn't stick, but honestly that's okay because this is going to look like rust on top of a metal piece, so if some metal shows through it is fine. These are the colors I'm going to be using to age the rest of the table and I'm starting with a watered down black and the best suggestion I can give you for getting a realistic rust look is to look up some references. I researched old rusty table and got plenty of examples to look at and these were the colors I picked out to help me get the look that I'm looking for. The only thing I wish that I did different was I wish I had figured out a way to make a hole in the paper so that it looked like the rust had actually eaten through some of the furniture. I'm not quite sure how to do that. I'm thinking maybe with some kind of burning technique, um, but if I do figure out that, I will make sure to update you guys. Even though I did cover up most of the wire, I'm taking some silver paint and I am adding a little bit of the metallic shine back to the chair. Not too much though, so I'm putting on some paint and then wiping it off and just putting little hints of a metallic shine to let you know that yes, this was once a metallic chair. I'm going to go back and forth between the metal, the silver metal metallic and the bronze metallic. Once that's finished, I'm going to use my rust techniques that I've shown you before, where I add sand and tacky glue to paint. My mixture usually ends up being about a third of each of those materials, um, but you can mix up the paint to be the thickness that you like. And then I just scrape it onto the table surface. I make sure to get the top of the surface, the side, and then don't forget the wire legs. This part of the process always ends up being my favorite because this is where I feel that the old piece really comes to life. It ends up looking extremely rusty and corroded and it gives it that extra detail, that extra texture that really adds to the story of the coffee shop. For this project, I also had to be very mindful of the bottom of the chairs because it is very likely that one of these chairs will be knocked over in my project. To finish off the rust, I added some bright orange and white. This is something I saw in my reference pictures. I'm just very lightly dusting, like not even hardly dusting this neon orange onto the top of wherever I put the rust mixture, and it's really helping that rust pop out and look extremely corroded. Same thing with the white, and again, as I say, look up a reference picture, you will see all the amazing colors that are created just by rust. So here are my finished pieces. That's it for this project. Um, so I went to go put these pieces into the coffee shop, and I came up with kind of a problem. At least I think it's a problem, but as always, I'm going to let you guys vote and let me know if it's really a problem. What I felt that I saw was that the armchair that I aged and put around the tree looks extremely large next to this little delicate set. So I felt like maybe my scale was actually off in this situation. So I got my little 12 scale model out and I put her in the chair the one I just made, and then I also put her into the armchair, and in both situations I felt like it looked like it was to scale, and so I guess maybe it's just like big oversized armchair versus little delicate coffee shop chair. Anyway, um, let me know your opinions in the comments. Um, I'm putting a little voting thing up in the little circle with the eye so you can let me know what you think. Um, but yeah, that's it for this tutorial. If you try it out, as always, make sure to tag me on Instagram. I love seeing you guys' creations, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!